If you know how to make a card, then you already know how to make an art journal, and vice versa. Basically, the only difference is the size and the type of surface that you use. The rest is exactly the same. To prove it, I will be creating both a card and an art journal today using the same materials and composition. I'm also using a very cool foiling technique with my Cricut machine. But I will not only show you that technique, I will also show you four more super simple techniques that will take your foiling to the next level. For the background, I'm using an already marbled background I created on another video using acrylic paint and shaving cream. It's such an easy technique that during that video, I created 15 different backgrounds, some in my art journal and some on white cardstock that I can use for cards. To make it even easier, I am following one of those simple card sketches and I will explain how the composition works for both art journaling and card making. The circle here will be my focal point, but it doesn't have to be a circle. In my case, I want it to be a tropical flower because my background gives me the feeling of a lush tropical beach where I'd like to be at the moment sipping some piña coladas. To make the flower, I first choose the one I want in the Cricut design space and resize it depending on my project. For my card, I size my flower to a three by three inch and for my art journal, a four by four. I tape the gold foil to a Bristol smooth white cardstock using the special tape that comes in the Cricut foiling kit. I will explain soon why I chose to use the Bristol smooth cardstock. But first, I change the blade in my Cricut to the foil one, load the mat and start foiling. The blade is not actually a blade, but more of a metal piece that embosses the foil onto the paper. I remove the foil from the paper, I change the settings from foil to cut, change the blade, and start cutting around the flower. The machine is smart enough to align it all how it was before, so it cuts around it perfectly. However, it did make a mistake one time and offset the flower, but don't worry. The flower does not go to waste. I use it for another cool foiling technique. I even try cutting the flower first and then foiling it, and it works perfectly too. I make sure to continue to use the green colored strong grip mat so the cardstock doesn't move. My plan is to watercolor the flowers to make them look more tropical, but I first want to cut some tropical leaves as well so I can color while the machine is cutting. However, instead of using the foil blade from the Cricut machine, I find this amazing foam adhesive in my stash of foil products that I bought a few years back when all the foil craze happened. But I'm embarrassed to say that I never used any of those products, not even once. So reaching out into my stash and using some of those products felt amazing. I choose two leaves from the Cricut Design Space, change my blade to a deep point blade because the foam is pretty thick and cut the leaves. Now this is important. Make sure to select the foam material when cutting and cut it twice through the machine to make sure it cuts through. While the machine is cutting, I start coloring my flowers. Now this is where experience from my last video helped so much. Last week, I created beautiful foiled flowers, but when I went to color them, I completely ruined them because first, the cardstock was too thin, and secondly, I used magical powders, which are highly pigmented, instead of watercolor markers. If you watch that video, you will remember how frustrated did I feel after ruining those flowers. So today, I just knew I wasn't going to make the same mistakes. So instead of using a hundred pound regular cardstock, I use a hundred pound Bristol smooth paper, which holds wet mediums really well. I didn't even have to add a base coat of gesso. To color the flowers, I use the Kuritake Zig Real Brush Markers, which blend so smoothly with water. I paint my flowers yellowish orange by adding shaded layers to create depth. This color looks so beautiful with the bluish green background. Now my machine is done cutting, but I realized that the thinner leaves do not cut through. So I choose another leaf to cut. Then I remove the protective plastic 
and rub foil onto the leaf. It creates such a cool effect that it makes me wonder why I haven't used this technique before. And it makes me think of all the other products that I might have sitting on a shelf and I should really take them out. Like this sticket paper. I don't even know when I bought it, but I decide to take it out and cut a piece from it. Then I apply a foil on top thinking I will die cut it, but instead it creates such a cool distress foil paper that I decide to cut it and use it as this line in the composition because it creates movement. I glue the flowers, leaves, and foil strips on the cards and put them aside knowing I still have to add a sentiment and my favorite finishing touch. In truth, my cards are basically done, but I feel that was the easy part because I was using a card sketch but I need to adapt the sketch to my art journal. So first I create the composition line, which I adapt with another cool foil technique. Instead of creating one line, I use an adhesive tape and run it across my page creating strips. Then I place the foil on top and press. The foil sticks to the adhesive creating foil line marks which in turn create movement. I also know that I need a bigger focal point. So instead of using one flower, I use three. Two of the ones I watercolored and one of the ones I messed up, which I don't only watercolor, but I actually cut around the leftover flower image on the foil and glue it to the background flower using matte medium. But I'm not done yet. As although I like keeping my cards simple, I love adding texture to my art journals with some script stamping around the page using black ink and even add some more marks with stenciling. You could add these to the card as well, but since I had less space on my card, I chose to leave the background intact. Although I still add another fun little technique to the cards, which you will see very soon. To add a sentiment to my cards, I cut the word hello with my Cricut and glue them on top of the flower. And for the art journal, I use one of my digital quotes, although I could have cut a quote with my Cricut machine as well. Then I take gold spray and using a paintbrush, I splatter some gold on the cards and on the art journal as it ties it all in with the foil. The third thing I love adding to my journals is a border which I create using a black Stabilo pencil and blend it with some water. It creates the perfect frame for my composition. You can definitely see the resemblance between the cards and the art journal. The colors, designs, and techniques are basically the same, and all that might change is the size and the type of surface that you use. Even a canvas, like in this mixed media canvas I created right here. 